to culture and Christianity. And today we are talking about we are Christians African, not Africans Christian. And Mr. John Nana, what should we do in order to express our worship of God from a cultural perspective without being ruled by traditional beliefs? Before we went for break, we were discussing this great man. And I really recommended everybody interested in this topic to pick a book of this book, Theological Pitfalls in Africa by Dr. Bian Kato. Bian, B-Y-A-N-G. Bian Kato, K-A-T-O. I really encourage you to, because he deals with this issue. And um, his message is clear. It's God's will that Africans, we Africans, on accepting Christ as our savior, we should become Christians who are Africans. Africans who become Christians should therefore remain Africans wherever their cultural, their culture does not conflict with the Bible. So he was fighting for, we don't copy white man's customs, but we do not retain any custom that is contrary beliefs to the scriptures. It is the Bible that must judge, not a white man, not another culture, should not judge us. The Bible must judge the culture, not missionaries. So we need to, even us, who are becoming missionaries, like many people in, in Kenya are moving to the north to, to evangelize, they be in the north. The rule who goes to, to among the Trukanas should not require the Trukanas to become rules. The thing Bian Kato is saying, it is the Bible that must judge the culture, not missionaries. Where conflict results, and it certainly will, between the customs, the cultural element must give way. And that's where the crux matter will be. Would you be willing to refuse to do what your parents have told you to do because they are still in that belief system. And so they believe if you don't do this culture, a curse will come. The ancestors will be unhappy with you. Will you be, uh, take the risk of being caught by the curse of your forefathers in order to please God? Unfortunately, many African, Africans have chosen not to do that. Because they want to be protected by Christ. <laughs> But they also want to benefit from the ancestors. Bian Kato is telling us, no, you must come to God aware that he is the biggest power. John tells us, he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. That means the belief system of ancestors. We don't doubt there is power. There are people who have gone mad because of disobeying the ancestral instructions. But if you are a Christian, you are protected by the blood of Jesus. And so you can say no to what the ancestors said you should do in as long as it disagrees with the belief in Jesus Christ. And when you do that, people will sit there and wait for you to die. But you'll still be alive because Christ has actually protected you. So those two extremes is something you have to deal with. We do not want to abandon every part of our culture. We only want to abandon the one that contradicts our new belief in God. So the question you have asked then is, how are we to continue worshipping God in an African way? And that's, um, that's not very difficult. Four things. Number one, which is important. You must understand how you sing is not something that, will, that is really... Uh, God is interested in your heart. Whether your heart is recognizing him as king, recognizing a sovereign, he is looking at your heart. But in order to express that to God, there's a method of singing. So the way the white man would do it with a piano and whatever, that's, that's not the way the African would do it. I can beat drums. And because God looks at the inside, that's what he told uh, Samuel, Samuel when, um, and Jesse when they were looking for a new king for, 
for Israel. God looks at the inside, not the outside. It means I can worship God in an African way as long as my heart is okay. The white man is allowed to have his piano and accordion and whatever, and he will still be heard by God because the music will not be the major issue. It will be what is the condition of his heart. So once we understand that this thing outside is not worship, it's not the real worship, what God is looking at the inside, you can be saying, hallelujah, and you are running, you at that time you are looking at a girl whom you want to sleep with. Now it's very clear that you are doing a mouth exercise. <laughs> it's not worship, because worship is a condition of the heart, because God looks on the inside. So you therefore can worship in an African way, as long as it is a way of expressing the truth inside you. It's just like we talk about baptism. Baptism, you are thrown into water and you come up. And I keep telling people, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ and you get put in water and you come out, if there is no belief, because these pastors are very clever, they start by asking you, so and so, do you believe in Jesus? You say yes. Because of your faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Boom! And you come out and you say, I'm baptized. But if there is no belief, you are just lying. You are a dry sinner on this side. Then you put in water. On the other side, you go, a wet sinner. <laughs> Nothing changed. From a dry sinner to a wet sinner. All, you, all that happens is wetness. And it's the same thing with worship. It is not what you say, it, it's us on the inside. So that's the first thing I thought I need to, I need to emphasize. So that even as we, we talk about um, worshiping in an African way, you will understand that God looks at it. Number two, you should also care. Whereas God looks on the outside, <laughs> man looks, or on the, God looks in the inside, man looks on the outside. And Paul is very clear. The fact that you have a free conscience should not be excuse for you to damage somebody else's conscience. For example, when I grew up in our tradition, every December there were circumcision ceremonies. And our culture, the culture I come from, allowed you to be dirty, talk dirty language for only three weeks. <laughs> During that time, anybody could talk about, describe the private part, what not. It was, a, if, you are, if you are somebody over 50, you'll understand what I'm talking about. It's part of circumcision. I don't know how, how our culture believed that by being, talking immorally, it will help the boy to become a man or to help the girl to become a woman. But that's the way we were. And there were songs we were singing. The interesting thing is, as soon as circumcision is over, if you ever sang such a song, you'll be beaten by your mother. It's immoral. You can't be allowed to talk. So you have to wait until the next year, same time, to talk it. But you know, the thing was so immoral that if you are looking after sheep and you start whistling the tune. Now, do you know everybody around you who know you are immoral? <laughs> and you see, the, 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 because of it. So even if you put Christian words, those of us who knew what it reminds us of, will not believe the Christian words. You'll be saying, praise the Lord, but you're saying, praise the Lord. Da, da, la, 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 la. Now, you see, the tune is immoral. That's the way we believed it. You, you are innocent. Because you mean it. You mean to worship. But you are affecting me because you are starting to remind me of thoughts that are evil. So when you talk about worshiping in an African way, it's not enough that you are honest. It's not enough that you mean good. You must check the environment. Is it positively impacting the others or not? And that's why it's a very difficult thing even these days. Although we have become traditional culture, even modern culture is the same. You have a song that is a top ten among discos in the bar. Then you change the tune and want to sing it in the church. And I keep asking, are we lacking originality? Can you come up with a tune? So that the people who used to be in the bar and have now come to church do not get reminded of the bar. So when you talk about worshipping, how can we Worship in an African way without dabbling in ancestral worship and wrong beliefs. It's very important. So the first thing is, what is in the heart? The second thing is, how does it affect the people around you? Thirdly, 
and importantly, you must ask yourself a very important question. If I worship in this way, does it please God? Is what I'm doing something that pleases God? It's very important you ask that way. Number two, am I requiring others to copy me? Because it's okay for each person to worship in his own way as long as you worship together. Now, those are questions you say. So when you talk about worshiping in an African way, it must bring glory to God. Even you are, you are doing it in an African way. And it must not affect others in any way. That's what it really means to worship the Lord. And Bian Kata reminds us, it's possible. There are many things, and I'm repeating myself, where our customs are biblical. They actually agree with the Bible. Why should we change them? Let's worship the Lord in that way. If you're worshiping God in an African way, you should be able to please God. We've come to the end of our program tonight. I'm Masikiari and our guest speaker was Mr. John N. Nganga. Thank you so much for coming. Till next time, same place, same time. Have a blessed night.